lecture was given by T. Colin Campbell, Professor Emeritus of Nutritional Biochemistry at Cornell University. I started out, as you heard this morning, basically from the farm and came from that background and was focused primarily on the idea that we all need to get more protein and we particularly needed to get more animal protein especially. He spoke about the China study, which is considered the most comprehensive study of nutrition ever conducted. This 20-year project examined the relationship between diet and disease in one of the few areas in the world where people still consume a mostly plant-based diet. He teamed up with Chinese and British researchers who went into 65 counties in rural China and found out what 6,500 people ate and how they lived. But it turns out that as soon as a little animal food started creeping in the diet in some counties, you know, blood cholesterol levels started going up, cancer started to appear, heart disease eventually began to appear. Since the beginning of Dr. Campbell's research, the connection between meat and dairy consumption and disease has been confirmed over and over again in scientific studies and even studies of studies. Diabetes is a disease that more and more people have to worry about. Fortunately, studies have shown that a healthy, low-fat vegan diet can prevent diabetes and even treat it better than the American Diabetic Association diet and common medications. The two strongest cancer links are the ones between prostate cancer and dairy consumption and colon cancer and red and processed meats. Finally, vegans have a 26% lower chance of dying from America's number one killer, heart disease. That's because they avoid meat and dairy, which contain artery-clogging saturated fat and cholesterol. The science on plant-based diets is overwhelming and has led the nation's largest organization of food and nutrition professionals to state. Appropriately planned vegetarian diets, including total vegetarian or vegan diets, are healthful, nutritionally adequate, and may provide health benefits in the prevention and treatment of certain diseases. But the American Dietetic Association doesn't determine government nutrition recommendations. The government has its own committees to determine the official nutrition policy for the country. So what they choose to say you know, is very, very important. They're translating the science into public policy. It's very important that the people on those committees really be objective. In the days when I was involved, the chair people of those committees were good, they were objective, and oftentimes outside of our community. They didn't have any conflict of interest. Now, uh, in the two of the most recent committees, the Food and, the Food and Nutrition Board that sets the nutrient recommendations, and also the Dietary Guidelines Committee, it, it was, in one case, it was chaired uh, simultaneously by the same individual who hmm. had to be a major consultant for the dairy industry. Hmm. And so under those circumstances, uh, you're going to have a committee that's really biased, seriously biased. And so, for example, when they came out last time, increasing milk consumption from two glasses a day to three glasses a day, that's why it happens.